Hello, I wanted to give a quick garden tour update. Several things are blooming now, so I wanted to show you. Um, so here, the Coreopsis is coming in beautifully. It seems like it's um, liking the hot weather. Here I put in the la lavender that I had grown from seed and transplanted um, just yesterday and then the lavender's blooming it's got a bee on it very happy on there the calendula is looking great that's the last one that i had um went uh winter sown so it's um transplanted now so all, those are all the ones i have the gara is looking great. I see some little potential seed pods. And then this is the star of the show right now. This is the rose campion. And the flowers are just blooming everywhere and looking gorgeous. Over there in the back um, is the St. John's wort. So I'll try to get in there. Um, Take a look at these flowers that are growing in. They look beautiful. Last year, when they planted them, um, it was so hot and it, it, there was barely any buds on it. So i um, very happy to see it with so many blooms this year. Then the next one is over here. Okay. Um, the Dianthus. So that is looking pretty spectacular. Lots of blooms coming up. And the third one over there. And over here, my Rose Campion. Something broke it. So a casualty. All right, here's the other Rose Campion. And that one's putting on lots of blooms as well. Then we've got the Echinacea Powwow. So setting all the buds. I believe that one will bloom later in the summer. Then we've got the Rudecchia, and that one is also setting lots of blooms in there. So that looks great. Lots of buds, I mean. And another Echinacea here. And the Shasta Daisies, the compact version that I have, which is Snow Cap. Um, lots and lots of buds. So these are going to look quite beautiful when they do emerge. And then back here, the Salvia Marcus, uh, which is a compact one. Unfortunately, getting a little... A little swallowed up in there, so may need to put it somewhere else, but that is looking beautiful. Now, this garden bed is a south facing garden bed, so it gets full sun eight plus hours a day. Um, this, the catmint, it's looking very pretty, but I do feel like the flowers are starting to fade. So it's not looking quite as vibrant as before. So I think in a week or so, maybe I have to cut it back and see if we get a second flush later. Um, and then here is the yarrow. And the yarrow is putting on a lot of buds as well. So yeah, that one's going to look great. This one is a pinkish red flower. Um, so I don't know if you can see that there, but it's, yeah, it's like a pinkish red. It's very, very pretty. So I'm looking forward to seeing that. This one seems to be a little behind or something munched it. Actually, I think something munched it looking at there. <laughs> yep, I think something munched. I need to do some deer spray, um, unfortunately. I do deal with deer and rabbits, which I saw a baby bunny 
this morning. Very cute and sweet, but they do like to nibble on the plants. So here's the spirea. The blooms are sort of fading as well. So this will have to be sheared back once it's all done blooming, which is very soon. And then here's the hyssop, looking very nice. Another one, and the spirea. So this bed is looking very, very good. So here is the other bed. This one is also um, southern exposure. So uh, the rose campion here is looking fantastic. Um, I have a crepe myrtle here. Um, kind of uh, had some winter damage, but looks like it's flushing in very nicely. And then here is the Veronica, Red Fox, and the blooms are looking beautiful. Just love this one. And then this Rose Campion is just amazing. It's my first year, obviously, um, as I mentioned, I am a beginner and I had set some seeds all over the place. Um, too hot when I did them, but wow, I cannot believe this one survived and just looking so beautiful. And then here's the other Veronica. So a little behind the other one, but it is starting to also um, put out some blooms and it's got some that'll come out a little later and then the rest of the Veronica I did cut back all these spent leaves from the daffodils so I cleaned that up and hopefully the Veronica's uh, sorry the Vinca will um, all fill in this is the third garden bed that has the southern exposure um, all of them, all the Southern Exposure ones get eight plus hours. This one uh, gets eight plus till about, about the last quarter of the bed. The last quarter of the bed um, actually starts getting shade at about, I don't know, 1 1 p.m., something like that. So the Vincas, the Dahlias are looking good. They're starting to put on more growth. Um, I did transplant some of the sunflowers and that's the one back there. And then I've got some zinnias right here. So hopefully they won't get eaten by slugs or other bugs. Um, I did spread a little bit of diatomaceous earth. So if you see any white anywhere, that's what I spread around um, some of the plants and on the ground. Um, everything is a little wet because I did want to water it in for today. So we've got another sunflower there, another one there, and then all of the cosmos over here, um, along with the two hollyhocks back there. And I'm really hoping that those come in. One of them is um, a very deep, dark, black, black-like color. And then all the others are dahlias. They're looking good. And then over here, I transplanted some amaranth. Um, so maybe those will come in. They're not looking that strong, but give it a shot. See what happens. And then this one is, I believe it's an astilbe. I do not have a tag for this, so I don't really know the type or, um, yeah. But I am seeing um, some little, little flower stems starting up. So that should put on some flowers later. And then here is the a struggling fern, <laughs> but it's got one frong right there um, that made it. And I did also put some diatomaceous earth on here. 
I think that might have helped it. Um, may have to put a little bit more because I did give it some water. And then the one astilbe is coming up. So also powdered it with diatomaceous earth to make sure that nothing is going to eat it. Everything is doing well here. Um, lots of buds showing up now on the alliums. And back there, um, I'm now seeing four um, lilies coming up. One, two, three, and four. Um, and then the gladiolas coming in slowly over there. This is an eastern exposure um, bed. So it gets about, I think, about five hours of sun. So this lily over here has, put, has some buds looking nice everything has buds looks great um, and the gladiolas all looking very healthy um, and then in between here I uh, we I am getting a few other lilies coming in um, with those are the salmon stars I really want to see those so I see those kind of like in between hopefully I didn't plant them too close but Hopefully nothing gets eaten also, so I do have to make sure I keep spraying um, so that the deer don't eat this. So this bed here is an, also an eastern exposure. Um, it does have sun in the morning and it's shaded in the front by about, I don't know, 1.30 or so. It starts getting shade. Um, the hydrangeas love it over here and they are starting to put on blooms. This is a lace cap hydrangea. So it only puts on petals on the edges and then in the middle later, um, some little teeny tiny flowers will come out from here. Um, but yeah, it's, it's really looking beautiful. Always puts on a nice show, but this year it's, it's got the most blooms I've seen. Um, since I moved into the house five years ago and didn't know much about hydrangea so didn't know how to take care of them and yeah it didn't get really any blooms um, but yeah that's looking really really nice and then the foxgloves still doing really well putting on lots of blooms I'm very happy to see that and then the ones that I started from seed looks like they are growing in very nicely and I am looking forward to that one because I bought the seeds from Florette Farms um, and it's kind of like a really pretty soft peach pink color um, so probably we'll see those next year and then I've started part of my fairy garden don't know if this is where things will end up I still need to work on that um, and there are other parts of the fairy garden that I need to also um, bring out here. And here are the other two foxgloves um, that I started from seed. So those are looking really nice and big. Of course, always things trying to take a little nibble out of them. And then over here, I started, um, or I did add some new plants. Um, here I've got some bachelor buttons, but these are teeny tiny ones um, by Proven Winners, and I just fell in love with them. Look how small they are. They're so cute. So I figured it would be cute in the fairy garden. And then um, I put, I'll put up the name um, of the purple plant right there, and then that's a verbena. And then some grass. Um, I also will put up the name because I do not remember it. I still, these are new, so I'm not, don't have them memorized quite yet. So yeah, a couple of different verbenas, um, the purple plant, and then um, the bachelor's buttons. And I put in this white flower, Angelonia, I believe. I'll put up the name if I got it wrong, but I, th I think that's the name of it. Um, and then I bought some more cat mint um, because it's doing so well in the bed in the front. Um, so I really like that. And then there are 
there were four sunflowers back there and one got munched on. So now there's only three and um, we'll see if they survive. And then right here is a salvia. Um, I think it's May midnight, May night. Uh, just, I'll put up the name. And then another cat mint. Um, then more of the angel angelonia. Um, and then this, I I decided to um, sort of break these apart. So we've got one here, and it is putting on some blooms. It's kind of hidden back there, but I'm very happy to see some blooms right there. And then the other one is all the way in the back. Um, so everything is looking very pretty here. And um, I am going to be putting my fairy garden somewhere in this stretch um, because I like it here with the walkway and all the hydrangeas. So I'll tuck it in here somewhere. And here's the bed in the front of the house. Um, this gets a another northern exposure um, in the morning. It's all shaded and it gets um, afternoon sun. Um, I am going to have to be watering, looks like the hydrangeas quite a bit, um, probably hand watering because of the very strong afternoon sun. Um, and yeah, they, they tend to droop a bit. Uh, so not sure if this is going to actually be the final place for these hydrangeas because of the, um, the sun being so strong here. But they are putting on lots of blooms and looking very pretty. I think the, the thing that I'm surprised with the most is that they are blooming with blue flowers. Now, when um, the landscaper bought it from the nursery, it came with blue flowers and I just assumed that unless I added something to make them blue that they would probably bloom as pink this year but surprise surprise they are blue or bluish purple but mostly blue <laughs> um, so it sort of doesn't quite go with the theme of the flowers I put in here, but I put in uh, some sun patients and these did really well last year for the sun patients. So I figured I'd try them again. And then I do have one astilbe that is coming in right there. So we'll see if this one actually survives here. Um, you know, lots of things trying to eat my plants. Um, so let's see, what else did I put in here? Um, the hookras are doing great. Lots of beautiful stems with flowers. So those are great. And then I did put some um, coleus in here. And again, a little of a hot color in comparison to the coolness of the hydrangea. But, oh well, I guess they will, that's what it will have to be this year. I'm really unsure if next year there also will be uh, blue, the hydrangeas, but it's very pretty that they're coming back as blue. So that's it for this garden tour. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.